tayo pong lahat ay tumungo at ilapit natin ang ating mga sarili sa ating Panginoon. Father, we are thankful for this beautiful day. Father, we are thankful, O Lord God, that you alone deserve, you alone, O God, indeed deserve all the power and the glory, O God. You are worthy, you are worthy, O Lord, to be praised, O God. At ang aming mga buhay, Panginoon, karapat dapat kayo, O Lord God, na ang aming mga buhay ay ialay po namin sa inyo, ibigay po namin sa inyo. Lord, kumilos po kayo ngayong umaga. Nalangin po namin ang iyong banal na spirito, O Diyos, O God, ang kumatag po, O Diyos, sa amin pong lahat. Mangusap kayo, Panginoon. Lord, lalong-lalo ng mga sa mga yaon, O God, hindi pa po nakakakilala sa inyo. Pakilala niyo po sa kanila, O Lord, kung sino po kayo. Pakita niyo po sa amin ang iyong katotohanan. At dalangin, Lord, na sa lahat ng ito ay tunay. Wala pong ibang may tataas. Maluluklok, Panginoon sa kataas-taasan, kundi o kayo lamang o aming Panginoong Diyos at ang anak ni si Cristo Jesus sa kapangyarihan ng iyong banal na Spirito. Salamat po, Father God. Lord, we are expectant that you and only you, O Lord God, who has the power, O Lord, to turn sinners to Christ, will move today. Not in our own abilities, not in our own self-effort, but Lord, we are surrendering all this ministry, this worship gathering, O oh God, to you and you alone. Have your way in us, Father God. Maraming marami pong salama. This is our prayer in the sweet and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, let's uh, return to our series on John chapter uh, 1, verses 1 to 18. We are now into still part 5, the prologue of verses 1 to 18. So let's look at this one. It's John part 6. No? So last week, hindi naman natin natapos yung text po natin. Uh, we're studying John chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. I'm sorry, it should be 18. Uh, nagkamali po ako. It should be John chapter 1, verses 14 to 18. No? Uh, so part 5 and 6 are about knowing God through the God-man, Jesus Christ. No? So maybe para lang po maalala po natin, ano po, the Lord Jesus Christ is the God-man. No? The God-man. Ang ibig sabihin po nun, uh, He has two natures. He is, he is very God of very God and very man of very man. No? There is no diminishing of either nature. No? Now, how is that possible is a mystery that we will never be able to comprehend through our own minds. No? It is a mystery that only God can really tell how it's like, but it is a mystery that we can only be uh, contemplate in wonder, kung ano pong ibig sabihin po noon. Okay. So now let us read John 1, no, verses 14 to 18. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 15, John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. So, ang pinakikilala po rito ni John the Baptist na kanyang pinauulit-ulit na ay si Cristo Jesus ay mas mataas at dakila kaysa sa kanya. Ano po? Dahil si Cristo Jesus has been eternally one with God from eternal past. Out of His fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made Him known. Okay. Before we start, do you feel hot? No? Do you wanna open the, ano, the door or maybe the windows? Kasi baka po mamaya biglang may mahimatay sa inyo. Okay? Maybe we can... Okay? Yung pong mga ano, bintana. Okay, salamat po. Alright, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now let's just look at quickly again the outline. Uh, of verses 14 to 18. 
All right. Roman numeral number one, it says here, the theme, of course, is knowing God through the God-man, Jesus Christ. And in the first part, from verses 14 to 17, we can know God, maari nating makilala ang Diyos, through the God-man, Jesus Christ. No? We can know God through the God-man, Jesus Christ. No? So kung kayo po ay isang agnostic, no? o isang taong naniniwala na merong Diyos, pero hindi natin siya kayang maarok, o makita, o malaman, o makilala, no? yun po ay sa kadahilan ng sa sarili nating lakas, hindi natin kayang makilala ang Diyos. Kaya po, Diyos na po mismo ang gumawa ng paraan upang ipakilala po niya sa atin kung sino po siya, no? ang kanya pong sarili. Okay? So, paano po yun? Unang-una sa lahat, knowing God through Christ means seeing His glory, verse 14a. Next, knowing God through Christ means experiencing the fullness of His grace. Knowing God through Christ means, this is the one that we will uh, talk about today, knowing God through Christ means knowing the fullness of truth. Okay, next one. Knowing God through Christ means fulfillment of all that was promised in verse 17. No, And then, yung pong pinakahuling-huling verse sa prologue, it is a summary of the prologue that Jesus Christ explains who God is to us. No, Jesus Christ explains who God is to us. No, So, I hope and pray that the Lord will really stir our hearts to have a hunger to know God, a hunger to know Him. Because truth of the matter is, in each one of us, there is already that divine grace of the Lord that we all know there is a God. But in man's unbelief and sinfulness, he or she suppresses the truth by reason, by rationality, in other words, by unbelief that there is no God. But each and every human being, no? We know that we have an accountability to face the judgment of God one day, no? Because we did not create ourselves on our own will, no? We have been created by someone, by a creator, and that is our God. So now let's look at letter C. Knowing God through Christ means knowing the fullness of truth. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father. And it says, He is full of what? He is full of grace, no? The Son, the Word, the Son is full of grace. Na-cover na natin ito last week. And what? He is full of grace and truth, no? He is full of grace and truth. In verse 17, inulit na naman yung truth. For the law was given through Moses, and then it says, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Okay, now let's look at uh, this first part here. Okay, truth. Para po kay Apostle John, actually, kasi yung grace was all, 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 only mentioned here in chapter 1, four times. But actually, all throughout the Gospel of John, the word truth was probably mentioned something like 28 times. So, to the Apostle John, sa kanyang theology, mas important yung truth. No? At least for this book, no? mas important yung emphasis ng truth for Apostle John. No? That is why malag- mahalagang mahalaga na maitindihan po natin ano ba ang ibig sabihin ni John the Beloved nung ginamit niya yung word na truth. No? Ginamit niya yung word na truth. Alephea. Ano yung sabihin ng truth? Pag sa atin po, siguro ito yung maiisip natin. Pag sinabing truth, kung ano yung totoo. Opposed to, ano, kasinungalingan or falsehood. Kung ano yung hindi totoo. No? Now, sa so Oxford Living Dictionary, ito yung ibig sabihin ng truth. Sabi po dito, truth, nakakatawa yung ano, mga, alam niya naman ng mga dictionary, the quality of, or state of being true. Okay, wow. Helpful. No, very helpful definition. Okay. Now, of course, you need to go back to yung the meaning of the word true. And, and Oxford Living Dictionary gives four. It can be in accordance with fact or reality. 
no? in accordance with fact or reality. Two, it means accurate or exact. No? For example, nanood ka ng sine and then it says it is a true depiction, accurate, factual. The third meaning of true for Oxford is that it means to be loyal or faithful. So when you tell your person, your friend, you are a true friend. It means your friend is loyal, your friend is faithful. And a, an archaic meaning of true is the word honest. No? The word honest. We appeal, for example, we appeal to all good men and true to rally to us. No? So ang ibig sabihin ng true, archaic is a person who's honest. However, my dear friends, this is what we will look at today. The Apostle John sees truth as penetrating even far deeper. Okay? It is not about facts. It's not about accuracy. It is not about being honest. No? A person can be totally, totally honest and yet still not be truthful. Alam niyo po yun? No? Because we can be honest and still be wrong. Because we ourselves are deceived on what we think is true or right. That is why we need something that will truly give us what is objective. And the only one who gives us what is objective is God. Because God is the one who sees all things and He is ultimate. He is absolute. No? So walang iba. Walang iba pong po pwedeng magbigay. So what is truth? Now, this is what it means, no? The meaning of truth in its original language, no? Basically, this is what it means. It is a hidden reality that is made explicit by God. Okay? It is a hidden reality that is made explicit by God. Okay? So, there are two very important ano po, no? uh, points dyan sa definition na yan. A hidden reality. There is a reality, but it is concealed. There is a reality, but it is hidden. Okay? It is hidden. Now, who makes it explicit? Who makes it explicit? Alam po ninyo, you know that we are in a postmodern culture because truth is now already relative because of the political correctness of our culture. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Don't say something that can violate or infringe upon the rights of others. No, Always say something that is politically, diplomatically correct. But how many times have we fooled ourselves or we have already denied what is the actual state of affairs simply because we refuse to be explicit? We refuse to tell the truth of what is really wrong, of what is really the matter, no? Ayaw po nating harapin yung totoo, no? Kaya po kailangan, kailangan po nating maging Christian. Kailangan po nating makilala ang Panginoon. Dahil ano bang bagay na hindi po ipinakikita ng Panginoon sa atin, mananatili po sa ating tago o mananatili pong wala po tayong kakayanang harapin kung ano po yung katotohanan. A hidden reality, it is to speak the whole truth, meaning it is to conceal nothing, no? walang itatago. It is the opposite of lying, it is even the opposite of forgetfulness. A person who is true or sincere is one who will conceal nothing and will not try to deceive. No? Hindi kanya ano, yung tinatawag nilang, he will not pull your leg, hindi kanya if a flutter. No, hindi kanya bobolahin, okay? O it i, 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 ano, ano po, uh, lolokohin. Truth is something hidden or concealed that has been made known. How? Truth in the under in the definition of John the Beloved is a disclosure. Kasi sabi rito, it is a hidden reality and who makes that reality explicit? God. Okay? It is God who makes it explicit. Diyos ang nagpapakita kung ano yung totoo. Ano po? Because truth is a disclosure from God, then it means it is truth declared. It is truth declared. Now, siguro tingnan po natin, uh, 
I try I try to make an uh, ano, an explanation uh, an illustration so we can understand it a little more no po. Anong difference ng truth sa fact? Pag sinabi bang fact, truth na ba 'yon o ano kaagad-agad, no? So sabi natin kanina, actually hindi naman. Truth is different from mere facts. Bakit po? We can have all the facts, but what are those facts for unless they are understood and interpreted according to truth? Okay? Example. You are a 22-year-old male. Fact. Correct, no? Fact. And then you got sick. Your fever is 42 degrees. You start to lose weight rapidly. You have a bad sore throat making it hard for you to swallow. No? You went to the hospital, they checked your platelet count, they checked your blood test, and this is what they discovered, so on and so forth. All of those things have been tested and they are facts. Correct? And they are facts. Now you go to the doctor, and the doctor tells you the truth about those facts, and the truth is that you are HIV positive. Okay? But even that can still be a mere fact. Even that that you are HIV positive can still just be a fact. Why? What is the truth? What is the truth? The truth is you've been engaging in what the Bible considers sexual immorality that is sinful to God. No? What is the truth? The truth is that unless you repent to the Lord, not only your body will suffer the consequences, but your soul will perish eternally in hell because the wages of sin is death. That is the truth. What is the truth? You've got to repent and ask God's forgiveness. Now, what is the truth? God is willing to forgive you. What is the truth? God sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins that you may be forgiven and that you may be cleansed and that you may have eternal life and become a child of God. You understand? So we can have those facts, but who does the interpretation? That's why a lot of times, the facts are merely symptoms. Symptomas lang po siya ng mas malalim po na sakit sa ating pong buhay. If we will not ask God to declare the truth for us, then we are in darkness and we are at a loss. That is why we need God. And God reveals the truth through Jesus Christ. No? So tingnan po natin. What is the truth? The truth is that you need to be born again. And what is it like to live without the truth? Darkness and lostness. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is truth. Si Cristo Jesus po, siya ang katotohanan. Siya lamang po ang meron pong declaration, no? at ang may knowledge of the true state of affairs. The true state of affairs about God, about the world, about ourselves, about man, and about life. That is, without Jesus Christ, we wouldn't know the truth. Because when Jesus Christ was sent by God here on earth, no? Lahat ng ating mga delusions, lahat po ng ating pong mga imahinasyon, lahat po yun, sinabi ni Lord, mali. Okay? Lahat yun, ito yung totoo. This is the truth. Why? Okay? In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Okay? Maliwanag po dito. John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Basic to that truth is the gospel of Jesus. Bakit po? Jesus declares the truth that God is holy and just. Jesus declares the truth that man is sinful and in rebellion against God. Jesus declares the truth that the wages of sin is death. No? Jesus declares the truth that it had to take the blood of the Son of God shed so that the holiness of God will be vindicated, that we will live, and the truth that apart from being born again, we have no salvation. No? 
That is why Jesus Christ is the truth. No, Jesus Christ is the truth. Because if Jesus Christ was not sent by God here on earth to die for our sins, to become the God-man, to become the Word becoming flesh, we are at a loss. What is the real state of affairs? What will be our soul's destiny? Who are we? Who is God? How did we come about in this world? What is going to be our future? Ano yung tamat mali? Ano po? And all of that has been declared to us because Christ is truth. Now, the gospel, yung pong message ni Jesus, who is, which is the gospel, it is the word of truth. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 5. Sabi po rito, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth. What is the word of truth? It is the gospel. Mga kapatid, ito po yung kadahilanan kung bakit po ang isang tao hindi niya naririnig hanggang ngayon kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng gospel. Walang truth yung kanyang buhay. These are just, uh, kubaga. Uh, para yung, yung kwento ng, you saw, an, there is this elephant, no? And you're a blind person, you tried to touch the elephant, pero ang nahawakan mo, yung buntot, and then you said, oh, the elephant is like a rope. The other one, another blind guy, you touched the elephant, and you touched his leg, and you said, oh, the elephant is like a trunk. No, another one touched in the ears of the elephant, and the person said, oh, the elephant is like a fan. Kasi ganun yung, yung, yung tenga niya and all those things, no? So, in other words, yung wala, ano po siya, uh, uh, wala siyang unity, wala siyang uh, coherence, no? Parang ganito po, alam niyo po, a lot of millennials today, when you talk to them, it's like as if they know a lot of things. But it is actually because they have looked at the internet, no, so many, many times. They say that a millennial would usually check his or her phone every 37 seconds, no? So now, it seems as if man is pretty intelligent because ang dami niyang alam ng mga bits and pieces of knowledge. But actually, a lot of those things can never amount to real education or truth. Why? Because there is really no unity sa alam mo yun, kaya po, ang dami, ang dami mong alam. Pero you become a scattered brain. You become more and more confused. No? Now, friends, the one that will pop the bubble, no? For a person to truly understand truth is the gospel. It is the gospel. That is why it is urgent that we share, we proclaim, we tell people the gospel because that is the word of truth. People will laugh at us. They will mock us. They will say all things. You're badu and all those things. Pang Middle Ages lang yan. But no matter what, the gospel, it's the truth. It's the truth. Alam nyo po yun? That is why when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back for the second time with all His hosts of angels, sabi po ng Bible, then all men will see this is the truth. All the while I rejected Jesus. All the while I rejected God. But friends, one day we will see Jesus as He is. No longer as a baby, but this time as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No? In Ephesians 1.13, In Him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in Him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Kaya po mga kapatid, huwag po tayong may intimidate o malungkot o yung pong, yung pong parang tayo po'y napapersecute. At sinasabi po nilang kakaiba na tayo, hindi na tayo sumasali sa kanila. But what do you want? What do we choose? Do we want something that is just, ano po, imaginative? Or do we want something that is lived according to truth? No? Now, my dear friends, eto po yun. Sa atin pong pakikipag- uh, relasyon sa Panginoong Jesus, binigay niya po sa atin ang kanyang banal na spirito. Ang banal na spirito po ay spirito ng katotohanan. Sabi po sa John 12 and 16. In verse 26, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify about me. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, 
He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative. But whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will disclose to you what is to come. Amen? So which means that while we are here, we have a relationship. Jesus Christ no, is already in heaven. But we are not apart from Christ because the Spirit of truth, who is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, is in us and He continues to lead us into truth. Amen? That is why yun po yung burden ng biblical worldview. No? Those are just bait questions, human potential. Because these are questions that the world provides an answer that are totally humanistic. We need to provide the word of truth. And it is the gospel. Now, my dear friends, what is the opposite of truth? The opposite of truth is lying. The opposite of truth is deception. It is deception. What is deception? No, Deception is when you see something and you thought it was cool and nice and uh, great, only to find out you have been deceived. You bought something and you thought it was genuine, only to find out it's made in China. You were deceived. <laughs> No? Mabuti sana kung andun lang sa mga areas na umili ka lang ng ganito. But what if, for example, you were deceived? You thought you were saved. You thought your good works can bring you to God. You thought your good works can satisfy the righteousness of God. And you thought no, that I will go to heaven, but you have been deceived. You are not really a Christian yet. You still do not have salvation. No? So in matters that are spiritual, it will really have its great effect in our lives. Now, friends, we need to remember that we have an adversary who is Satan. And Satan is a he is a liar. No, He is a liar. In fact, he is the father of lies and has no truth in him. No? Bakit po natin ito kailang i-include? Kasi po, kasi po, bukod sa ating mga mga mapupusok o mga deceitful na mga puso, meron pa po tayong, ano po, kaaway na siyang nagbubulong po mayat maya sa atin ng mga malicious things, deceitful things, deceitful lies. My dear friends, anything, anything that is not true, that is not from the Lord. Suspiciousness, malice, that is not from the Lord. That is not from God. Stop it! Stop thinking of it! Amen? When there is malice, when there is suspiciousness, stop it! It's not from the Lord. No? We have no way of finding out the truth. We give it to God. We surrender that to God. Because the more we think about those things, what happens? No? We become impure. No? And God, who is holy, is all pure. No? And when we become impure, little by little, we drift away from the Lord. No? Little by little. No? We lose His presence in our lives. Now, what I mean by that is yung manifest presence ng Panginoon. Nagiging malamig po yung relationship natin sa Panginoon. In John 8.44, He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in Him. Whenever He speaks a lie, He speaks from His own nature for He is a liar and the father of lies. So pag dumating po tayo sa mga text na to, Ano po ay mas maintindihan po natin ang ibig sabihin po nito mga uh, nakalagay po rito, no? Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, there is a great need for us to be totally dependent on Jesus, to be totally dependent on the Bible, on the word of truth, to counter the evil and deceptive lies of the enemy. Okay? Kaya po, again, that's why mahalagang mahalaga po na constantly we are nourished in the words of the faith. Constantly we study, we read, we meditate on the Bible. Okay? I don't know why I'm saying this, but I will just rem ano po, remind us. A person who said, no, a Bible, no, that is na uh, walang kagdusing-dusing, tapos well intact, na yung mga pages magkakadikit, you'll find a man, no, na kung ang Bible niya ay magkakadikit at ayos na ayos, yung buhay niyan magulo. Pero kapag ang Bible mo ay, ano, ano, 
ay torn and tattered, <laughs> no? Ay gulagulanet, no? Nandoon na rin ang uhog, sipon, luha. Nandoon na rin ang katakot-takot ng mga ano ano, markings, no? Nandoon na rin ang mga katakot-takot ng mga na, yung yung Psalm 23 ilang beses mo nang, no? Isla ang beses mo nang ano, hinighlight, i-highlight mo na naman ulit kasi kinaugnay ka na naman ni Lord. You will see a life that is Ano po? You will see a life that is strong in the Lord. A life that has direction. A life that is righteous. No? It's why we need to be always dependent on the Word of God. No? So that we will always be able to counter the lies of the enemy. In fact, in John chapter 17, verse 17, ang sabi po dito, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. No? Sanctify them in the truth. Ang ibig sabihin po ng sanctify, Lord, sila yung ibukod. Lord, sila yung linisen. Separate them. No? And what is it that sanctifies, that cleanses us? It is the truth. No? It is the truth. No one but God truly sees the truth inside our hearts. We need God's word to sanctify us constantly lest we live in a lie, in a denial of what is true. The other thing that truth does is in John chapter 8, verse 32. The Bible says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It is heavy to live in deception. Napakabigat na tayo po ay mamuhay sa kasinungalingan, sa kasalanan, o sa isang pagdadanay ng isang bagay na mali. Napakabigat. Pero wala pong kasing gaang kapag tayo po ay namumuhay po na sa liwanag at katotohanan po ng Panginoon. That is why po, mga kapatid, ang atin pong tunay na pag-asa at kaliwanagan ay ang mga salita po ng Panginoong Hesus at ang pagkakaroon po ng buhay na walang hanggan kay Kristo Hesus. Siya po lamang ang tunay ano po, at wala na pong ibang tapat pa kundi ang Panginoong Hesus po lamang. Sabi nga po, apart from the element of truth in God, there would be no certainty whatsoever in this life. Men would wonder in comfortless perplexity. No? Ganda kasi nung phrase, comfortless. No? Sa isang buhay na wala kang, lagi kang aligaga. Alam niyo po yun? Ilan mo sa inyo rito ang aligaga? There's no peace. There's no comfort. You are always perplexed. Why? Because it happens when a person's life is not standing upon truth. No? We are always anxious. But my dear friends, that is why, Lord, no, lead us always into what is true. Because what is true is the one that will set us free. Sabi do, not knowing when they came or where they are going. And then letter D. This part is a little bit uh, theological, but by the grace of God, sana po ay paintindi po ng Panginoon sa atin ito. Knowing God through Christ means the fulfillment of all that was promised. No, Knowing God through Christ means the fulfillment, paganapan of all that was promised. Lahat po nang ipinangako. Bakit po? So verse 17, ito po ang nakasulat. For the law was given through Moses. Okay? There is a contrast. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Bakit po mahalaga itong verse na to para doon sa mga Jews, okay, na sinulatan po ni Gospel of John, ano? Because for the Jews, no, they think that Moses is superior to Christ. They think that the Old Testament is superior, Judaism is superior to Jesus Christ. That is why up to now, the Jews are still, ano po, at a loss. They wouldn't accept Jesus Christ as the promised Messiah, no? That is why the beloved, John the Beloved, he was explaining, the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, ano po bang ibig sabihin po nun? The law, the grace, these are 
how God has dealt with man. No? These are the methods that God has dealt with man. And there is a great contrast. Magkaibang magkaiba po sila. Okay. Ano ba yung law? Okay. The basic understanding of law is the the Ten Commandments. No? The Ten Commandments. Lahat po ng mga details, lahat ng mga explanation, lahat yon nag issue mula sa Ten Commandments. Okay? So, sabi nila, meron something like 630 plus laws. Kasama na yung ceremonia, lahat-lahat. Pero lahat ng yon, ano po, ang pinagmulan ay yung tinatawag nilang Ten Commandments. No? Yung Ten Commandments. Now, yung Ten Commandments or the law, it represented God's standard of righteousness. It represented God's standard of righteousness. Basahin ko lamang po sa inyo yung sinabi po ng isang Bible commentator, ang pangalan niya si Hendrickson. The law which was given through Moses, okay, was unable to supply this fullness of grace and truth. Though good in itself, the law was unable to save. It made demands, at, but did not possess the pardoning, no? and the enabling grace needed by sinners who are confronted by these demands. Okay? It provided types and shadows, example in its sacrifices, but never the reality or the truth. This grace and this truth came through Jesus Christ, who by His redeeming life and death merited the grace and furnished the reality to which the types and the shadows of the Mosaic Law had been pointing. So, ano sinasabi po nito? What it means is that, okay, the Ten Commandments by itself, it is good. No? Ganito yun. This is the requirement of God, the Ten Commandments. But can man fulfill? Can man deliver? Obey? None. Even the Jews, they cannot follow. They cannot obey. No? That is why the law brought death. Because if you transgress the law, the law which is the righteous character of God, demands wages, demands that you be punished because you transgressed the law. And of course, alam naman natin yan. Practically speaking, we experience that every day, no? Yung pong traffic law and all those things, no? Na pag hindi mo yan, na hindi ka nag-drive ka during coding, your license will be confiscated and you will have to pay, kano ba, 1,000? Something like that, no? So, merong, ano po, merong fine, no? So, imagine niyo po yung, ano yung fine sa buhay natin, no? So, kung wala si Jesus, nandun lang tayo sa Old Testament, hindi natin ma-meet yung law, yung Ten Commandments. E sabi, kahit isa lang daw ang makumit nating mistake, we have already, what? We have already violated the whole law. So, there is a fine expected, from us and that fine is death that fine is death that is why John 117 was saying the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ no because even if the law is good it is unable to save it made demands but it cannot pardon you know hindi niya kayang magpatawad bakit po Siguro mas maintindihan natin, okay, ito ang sinasabi po ng uh, another exposition. Sabi rito, under the law, God demands righteousness from people. But under the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, He gives it to people. Amen? Not anymore my righteousness. Now, it is the righteousness of Jesus. It is the righteousness of Jesus, no? Next, under the law, righteousness is based on Moses and good works. But under grace, it is based on Christ and His character. Hindi po ba napakasarap magkaroon ng Savior? Amen po. Kaya nga grace eh, wala, namang, wala kang ginawa. Wala kang ginawa, no? Yung righteousness na hindi po natin kayang pagtrabahuhan, no? Tayo po ay binigyan ng kinalooban ng gift 
yung righteousness ng Son of God, yung righteousness ni Christ, yun na ngayon yung righteousness na meron tayo. That's why we are justified. That's why we are declared right before God. Under law, blessings, a company of agents. No, ito yung performance mentality. No? Blessings accompany obedience. But under grace, wow, He bestows, God bestows His blessings as a free gift. How many of you, friends, have experienced, you didn't deserve it, but God blessed you? No? Many, many times. No? You are not worthy. You are not as good as you thought. No? And what happens? God promotes you. He blesses you. No? And so many, many, many things. No? Kaya nga sabi po ni J.C. Ryle, thankfulness is a flower that will only bloom well in a root of deep humility. No? Apart from knowing our unworthiness and sinfulness, we will always think we are entitled. We are always think we are worthy. But we are not worthy. Only God is worthy. No? And it brings thankfulness. The law is powerless to secure righteousness and life for a sinful race. But grace came in its fullness with Christ's death and resurrection to make sinners righteous before God. Amen? So, yun po yun. Yun po yung contrast. The law of Moses, the grace and truth. Now, we do not want us to fall into a bad heresy that we studied in church history, which is called, uh, uh, I forgot the, no, Manichianism po yata, o Monarchianism. Yung heresy na yun, ang sabi ron, o kung grace and truth naman pala, Wag na tayong gumamit ng Old Testament. Itapon na natin yan. Mag, mag, mag-dwell na lang tayo sa New Testament. Ngayon po, in our time, marami pong ganyang theology. Okay? Isa na puro yung turo ni Joseph Prince ng Singapore. No? So we were we were there ni Brother M. Nakausap po natin yung isa nating kapatiran, si Sister Edith. Actually, hindi lang sila. Marami pang ibang church. Ganun yung kanilang turo. Hindi na kailangan yung law. Hindi na kailangan ng Old Testament. But actually, ito po yung napakahalagang makita po natin. Ano? So, ibig sabihin, tayo ba ay pwede nang magkasala, nang magkasala, total naman, no? naka-safety na yung righteousness at yung salvation po natin. Hindi po ganoon. Bakit po? Because in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33, the law has not been discarded, but in the new covenant, it is written in our hearts. Okay? Kung tayo po'y tunay na anak ng Diyos at nasa kan- atin na po ang kanyang spirito, hindi ibig sabihin po nun, yun pong batas ng Panginoon, yung utos niya, no? ito po ay nasa puso na dahil po saan? Ano? Kasi anak niya na tayo at yung ating pagsunod, hindi na po dahil sa performance o dahil sa legalism, pero dahil mahal natin si Lord. Dahil tayo po ay kanyang mga anak, tayo po ay umiibig sa Panginoon, yun po ay bunga ng ating pagsamba sa Panginoon. No? Kaya po, pag isang tao ay tunay po na naborn again, siya ay tunay po na naging mana ng palataya, hindi niya maatim na sakta ng kalooban ng Diyos. No? Kung tayo po ay nakagagawa ng kasalanan at tayo ay hindi pinagpapawisan ng malamig, no? nakukuha po nating gumawa ano po, ng mga kasalanan at hindi po tayo nagigilty hindi po tayo nakukonvict, ibig sabihin nun ay wala pang spirito ng Diyos po sa atin because we can continue living in sin. We can continue living in sin and not be convicted. But if we are real children of God, no, the Spirit of God in us will be grieved, will be quenched because His law is in our hearts. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and on their heart I will write it and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No? One example siguro ito po. If there is hatred, there is bitterness, there is an unforgiveness in our hearts. No po? We cannot continue in those things. 
we know we have to forgive. We know we have to let go. No? We know we have to love. So ito po yung sabi po ng Bible sa Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Now, this is now what happens to the law that it has been in our hearts. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. Po, maliwanag po. Tayo po ngayon ay tinawag ng Diyos. Hindi na po tayo under ng yoke ng law. We are now under the grace of God and there is now freedom. No? There is now freedom. Kasi ginawa na lahat ni Christ eh. Ginawa na lahat ng Panginoong Jesus eh. The good deeds we do, no, it is no longer to earn salvation. Pero ito po, but do not turn your freedom, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. Uy, no? sisilip ako ng porn, re-repent naman ako pagkatapos. Uy, magkakomit ako ng immorality, magre-repent na lang ako pagkatapos. Uy, no? magsisinungaling ako, magre-repent. Hindi po eh, don't turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. No? For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. In the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Kaya po sa Galatians 5, ang sabi po, what is the fruit of the Spirit? What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control. No? It is a sign that there is life in us because we are bearing the fruit of Jesus. We are bearing the fruit of the Spirit of God. It is something that comes out, hindi mo alam, bakit nagbago na ako? No? Ano nangyari? No? Um, this is funny. No? Alam niyo yung Facebook, di ba, nagre-remind siya, a year ago, you wrote this. No? And then, a year ago, it reminded me of what Brother M wrote. No? And then, I got to see what he wrote a few days ago for me, you know? <laughs> no? And you know what I was saying? I said, Lord, how could this be? How could this be? For the men out there, no? And the women as well. Probably, no? The, the men would say, but I am not sweet. I am not affectionate. I am not gentle. No, I am not these things. I am straight to the point, no? And maybe even some women would say, hindi kasi ganun yung personality ko. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, the secret, fall in love with the Lord. Fall in love with His Word. And you will become Christ-like. And all those things will naturally come out because, it, not because it's our personality, because of Jesus. And when it happens, you will say, that's not me, that's Jesus. That's the Lord. It's the Lord. No? That is why if we are married, no? if we are married, John chapter 2 tells us, it becomes sweeter and sweeter. The best is yet to come. Not because no, we become more in love with each other. No, it is because of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is because of what Christ is doing in our lives. So yun pa rin po ang magiging secret po. Alam nyo po doon sa prologue na binasa po natin, ever since we started with the prologue, you will notice that John never mentioned the name of Jesus Christ and the very first time he mentioned Jesus Christ is in verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No? Here, John was making it clear that the Word who was in the beginning with God, the Word who was God, and the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us is none other than Jesus, the Messiah of Israel. And then finally, we go now to the, pro, uh, to the summary. The summary in verse 18. So parang ito na po sinummarize na po yung ating pong diniscuss from 1 to 18. No one has ever seen God. Okay? No one has ever seen God. But the one and only Son, who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. No? In this summary of the prologue, in verse 18, it is uh, summed up in four truths. 
Number one, first, that only Christ has seen God. No? That only Christ has seen God. No one has ever, ever seen God. What is the implication of this truth? All other religions, except Christianity, are a fraud. Because none of these religions have ever seen God. Mm -hmm. Has Buddha seen God? No, has Muhammad seen God? Who has seen God? Only the Son of God, Jesus Christ, has seen God. No? Second, Christ himself is God, but the one and only Son who is himself God. No? So we tackled this uh, lengthily, no po, that Jesus is not a creation, but he is eternally one with God, and he is the creator of all things. Letter C, it says here, Christ knows God fully. Sabi po rito, ano yung relationship po nila? And is in closest relationship with the Father. And is in closest relationship with the Father. And finally, Christ shows to us who God is. Ang nakalagay po, He has made Him known. Amen? He has made Him known. No? Uh, it is interesting that yung He has made Him known in that uh, verse. Uh, explain ko lang po ito, itong part na to. He has made Him known. Yun po palang word na yon. Ang ibig sabihin ng word na yon, He exegeted God for us. No? Ang ibig sabihin kasi ng word na exegeted, Ang ibig sabihin nun, parang hinimay niya ang Diyos para sa atin. No? Ipinilawanag niya ng mabuting, mabuting, mabuti para sa atin. Kung sino po ang Diyos. Glory to God. Amen? No? That is why, can we know God? Can we be accepted by God? Can we be right with God? Can we have a relationship with God? And the answer is yes. Because God Himself sent Jesus so that Jesus can make us know God. He has made us know God. So natapos na po dito ang ating pag-aaral ng verses 1 and 18, John chapter 1.